Okay, so what I want to do today is quickly show you how you can use uh, Node Red to be able to make sort of a cool graphical display from data coming off your Arduino Uno. And you can see here I've got this thing hooked up to a, a photoresistor and a thermistor, so we can see that it's actually changing. Note that this is not, you know, going broadcasting over the web or anything. This Uno is hooked up to this USB cable, which is hooked directly to the computer, which is displaying this screen right now. So it's essentially uh, all very local, all right? But it's still really cool, and we can build lots of cool stuff, and it's a great way to get started. So that being said, I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to start off by building an Arduino app that we can use. And I'm going to close all this down. Close all this down. We'll come back to it. And get rid of that for the moment. Okay, so what we want is a simple Arduino app that's going to give us data that's comma separated that we can use in Node Red. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to do this super fast and simple, all right? So we're going to go to basics, we're going to go to analog read serial, and uh, where did it go? Hold on a second. File, examples, basics, analog read serial. There we go. Close that out. All right, so I've got two uh, variable resistance devices hooked up right here without any external electronics. So therefore, I'm going to have to use uh, input pull-up to run these devices. In other words, I'm going to make these two analog pins. I'm going to hook them to a resistor inside the chip that's going to essentially uh, flood them with electrons. So if there's nothing hooked up to it and ask it if it's high or not, it's going to say yes, it's very high because there's a pile of electrons stacked up on the pin. But now I've given it a path to ground and the amount of electrons that are going to be available is going to be dependent on how many escape. So the resistance is low, then the value goes low because the electrons are escaping very quickly. If the resistance is really high, well, then it's hard for them to escape, so it reads a high value. Okay? And this is super easy to enable on an Arduino. All you have to do is go to pin mode, and set it to underscore pull up and that's going to charge that pin and connect that internal resistor. I want to do it with both of these devices because um, neither one of them have any external electronics. Okay. And then the other thing we want to do, well, I should read both these devices. And this is really lousy coding. I apologize, but in the interest of time, I'm going to just take advantage of some of this pre-existing code. All right. And I want comma-separated data, which means that I want it all on one line. So I'm going to get rid of those two new lines. And then I'm going to go right here, put a quote in there, and then put on our sensor value 1. And this is just crazy. I think I'm going to make this uh, once every second. Okay. So if I upload this, what we should get out of it is comma separated data. There we go. And if I put my finger on here, you can see the value goes up to almost 500. And then squeeze this, and you'll see that number begin to drop to 20, 214. Okay. So it's working great. So we have comma separated data. The things we need to memorize here for the moment or write down is this is going at 9600 baud. And this is hooked up to port 8. Okay, COM port 8. We're going to need that information to build our node red display. So I also have to close this because I can't compete with an open port. So I'm going to close that out. And now what we want to do is we want to open... Well, install Node Red if you haven't yet. So, do a search on Node Red. We're going to go get started. Like I said, I'm running locally. Run locally. And then I'm running on Windows. Depending on which flavor, you're going to choose your best path or use whatever method. But there's a nice installer you can get right here. I clicked on the Windows link. And now I'm going to the Node homepage and download this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna, I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. Download and install it, obviously. And when you install it, it's not going to give you a new icon or anything. It's actually just going to install the software uh, in your system. And to get it going, at least initially, we can create a button and whatnot, but we're going to just go with Command Prompt. So I put in COM, Command Prompt came up. And now that I have the command prompt, I'm going to type in node-red. And that is going to set up our server. All right. So you might note, yours might be a little different. Mine I already run before, so it already opened up my port, my COM port. But this is what you need right here. You need this site. Okay, because this is what the server is going to be running and you're going to put into your Chrome window and run it. And voila! Now this is the last thing I was working on, which is the one I just displayed with you. I'm actually going to clear it out, just get rid of it, um, and then build it from scratch. It shouldn't take too long. Now, the basic load does not have all the pallets, I'm sorry, all the nodes that you need. Okay. So we need to add a serial port, we need to add the dashboard. So that's done by going to these three bars here. And then you're going to manage palette. You want to on, be on palette. You want to go to install. And the first one you want to install is your serial communication. And Lowercase gives you a cleaner, easier access to it. Okay, so the one that you want to use is this Node Red serial port. I've already installed it. You can see it's grayed out. So again, I typed in a lowercase serial, and then we got to this serial port right here. So install it. If I recall, it takes a little while. And then the other one you're going to need is dashboard. And spell it correctly. All right, and again, you can see this one's grayed out on me. This is the one you want, Node Red Dashboard, right there. Okay, go ahead and install that. And when you do, what should happen is you'll get a couple of new nodes that you can use. Now, if they don't show up, <clears throat> you might have to close this down, uh, close this, and restart it. Go back to Command Prompt, type in Node Red, and then come back to this website, and it will be there. But you're looking for these serials, which weren't there originally, and this whole dashboard thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start, I need a serial in, for sure, that I'm going to be using. And then I'll go down to my dashboard. Let's we give lots of choices here. I'm going to throw a couple of gauges up here, and we can manipulate those. But I'll get it started that way. And the other thing we're probably going to want is a little debugging. It's kind of nice to not have to launch all your software to see what's going on. So I'm going to put a couple of debugs in here. Okay, so we have numbers coming separated by a comma. Okay, and we need to parse that into two separate individual numbers. To do that, we're going to have to write a little function. So I'm going to grab a function, stick it there. Okay, so these are all the pieces that we need. Um, let's start, you can, actually it's cool, you can see you can link them together. Let's start by uh, working on our serial port. Now there's a good chance yours is blank or it has some grayed out thing. You need to create that port. So go to that edit button. I, like I said, these are the important things here. COM8 and a 9600 baud. Okay. And I have my timeout here. I don't remember if I changed that or not, but I have my timeout at one second or 1,000 milliseconds. So once you've done that, you've got your baud rate, your port set, you can say update and say done. And now you've got your COM port set up. Okay. The next thing we need to do is this function. So this function is um, needs to be able to parse this information. Information coming in on node is called a, a payload okay so we have whatever it might be there's a packet of stuff it's called a payload what we want to do is we want to parse our payload 
So to do that, we have to do some kind of simple job of programming. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to copy, I'm sorry, create a variable. And then we want to split our payload by comma. Okay, so that's the very first thing it's going to do. It's going to create this variable. We're going to split this payload by comma. And then we want to parse it out. Okay, so we're going to take our output and we're going to parse it. So I'm going to create a variable, message1, and we're going to parse the output variable created. And we're going to put that very first chunk into the very first position of an array. And then we're going to do that again for the second. By the way, you can do this over and over again. I can have three, four, five. It doesn't matter as long as they're comma separated. And now I'm going to take the second number and parse it and put it into the second position of the array. And then what I want to do is I actually want to spit out the array. Okay. Into two separate messages that I created. All right. Now we should be good. And the next thing is we have to actually split that into two outputs. So I'm going to make two outputs. Done. And now you can see we have two of these things that have popped up. So if we link these together, we can deploy it. And of course, I haven't set these other things up, so it's giving me a little bit of a an error. And what we should get when we debug is that data coming out. Sure enough, you can see it streaming out. So let's actually go ahead and build our gauges next. So I'm going to double click this gauge. This is my first piece of information. That was my zero. That was the light. Okay. And I'll call this one light. And you might recall that when I first set it up, it was reading about 90, and it goes up to like 500. You can play with this. So I'm going to set it from 50 to 500. All right, and done. And now I'm going to run a wire from here to there. And then this one was our um, temp. And it actually start, went down. So the low, I'm sorry, the high value was about 250. I'll make it 300. And let's set the low value to 100. Of course, obviously, you can play with all these things to get it work even better. And we'll hook that up like so. We're going to deploy it. Now we want to display that information. So I'm going to go to this arrow here. I'm going to click on dashboard and then I'm going to launch it. And if all is well, by gosh, by golly, it looks like everything is working. And we now have our very first really simple uh, node red application going. Okay. So hopefully that was useful and uh, I'll work on another one here and I'll see you guys again soon.